Well, welcome to the latest edition of Trojan Football Talk. I'm your host, Tom Vartanian. Today's show brought to you by AmeriQ Credit Union for every day, for everything. Located next to Little Caesars at 3944 Route 281 in Cortland. By the Cortland Voice, the exclusive media partner of Trojan Football Talk. For all your local news and sports in Cortland County at no cost to you, check out CortlandVoice.com. By the Royal Auto Group on Route 281 in Cortland, the home of no hassle, no razzle dazzle. Check them out at RoyalAutoGroup.com. By Yemen Real Estate at the entrance of Yemen Park off I-81, exit 11 in Cortland. By DJ Philly C. Make your wedding, party, or event extra special with the best DJ in the area. Contact DJ Philly C. at 607-745-4346. By Nikki C.'s Hometown Pizzeria and Meatball Shop on Route 281 next to Hobo's in Homer. Find them online for fast, secure ordering or call 607-749-5300. They have a unique menu with dietary-specific options. Nikki C is your grab-and-go specialists. By Graftex, located on Elm Street in Cortland. Founded in 1984, they provide custom screen printing and embroidery for teams and local businesses. Graftex continues its dedication to servicing customers' needs for innovative graphic designs, custom and printed apparel, and quality service. They are easy to contact at 1-800-417-7791. By Seven Valley Agency at 18 Tompkins Street in Cortland for all your personalized insurance services. Give them a call at 607-753-1821 or check them out online at sevenvalleyagency.com. Seven Valley Agency, where your money matters, our advice counts. By Isaac Merker Studio, handling all your photographic needs in Central New York since 1982 at 74 Hamlin Street in Cortland. Give them a call at 607-756-0849 or check them out online at isfmerker.com or on their Facebook page. By M&D Deli, located on Central Avenue in Cortland, open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. M&D has breakfast sandwiches, bakery items, and daily lunch specials. They are also available for catering. Check out their Facebook page for more information, stop by, or call 607-753-8646. That's 753-8646. Look for their new food truck as well, coming in the spring of 2022. By Crop Growers, LLP, the first choice in crop insurance located in Homer. Contact Casey Slate at 607-591-2460 for more information. And by the First National Bank of Dryden at 12 South Main Street in Homer. Safe, secure, and locally owned for all your banking needs. For more information, stop by, call 607-662-4179, or check them out at drydenbank.com. Well, we had the preview game back on the second week of the football season, all knowing that most likely Homer and VVS would be meeting again, and they are meeting this Friday night, 7 o'clock kickoff time at uh, Butts Field, the Section 3 Class B semifinal round. And just by that fluke this year that they're allowing the uh, higher seeds to have a second home game, Homer does get a sectional home game for the semifinals this year. And uh, joining me once again is Coach Gary Pesilic. And as he said, uh, we, we had a preliminary visit, and, of course, Kind of, kind of what bit us when it came to the uh, seeds, the one and two seed. You trailed VVS fourteen to seven at halftime, but uh, twenty one fourteen and a half. Okay, well, okay, twenty one four. Well, twelve fourteen seven after the first quarter, and yep. uh, Homer was ahead. But then it was the yeah, they it was the twenty one fourteen halftime deficit. Homer coming back for a uh, thirty to twenty one victory on the uh, on the Knights, and that was, it was a tough physical game. We expected that, and. Uh, Homer's got a little bit better, even though we've lost two key players, and VVS has certainly gotten better since that. That kind of that loss kind of woke them up, and they've been playing like gangbusters since. And uh, so this should be just another typical physical close VVS Homer game on Friday night. Tom, thanks for having having me here. The reality is, yeah, this should be another smash mouth affair in a good way. Um, you know, both teams are clearly better than they were week two. The the ironic thing is uh, an, uh, an injury uh, to the quarterback of EVS in their um, Fonda Fultonville game was uh, a, a situation where they had to adjust. They have a great senior, uh, number eleven. They lost Whitman, who was number ten, their starting QB, and uh, I think it's, it's pronounced Herodic. Harodnik, uh, Jackson Harodnik, number 11, is now their quarterback, and uh, they have pushed the run game more, and I'll be honest with you, they look better, they're more effective and offensively by running the ball a lot more. I know last week, uh, James Wheeler, the fourth, their tailback number one, he rushed for 29 times uh, for over 220 yards, and the reality is he he's a kid who, um, you know, he's benefiting not only by being their tailback, but he's also 
probably at least half those carries were out of the Wildcat formation, which old Steve Bush made famous up at West Jenny High School, went on to the Miami Dolphins, and now it's all over the NFL high school and college, still called the Wildcat based on old West Jenny, New York. So, yeah, this should be an outstanding game. You know, we don't have, obviously, we don't have Logan Peck. We haven't had uh, Wyatt Wilbur all, all year, who Wyatt, by the way, will be this week's game captain. He's been ultra dedicated. He has served the team in so many roles, knowing that he wasn't going to be able to probably play in the, any of the games. Um, you know, he's been a leader in practice. He charts everything we run in practice. So every evening in a matter of 10 minutes, I can go through those lists and evaluate what didn't we get done today, what do we got to do tomorrow. And uh, he's been a huge contributor to the team and never missed a practice other than for physical therapy uh, for, for his back concerns. And uh, as a result, you know, he's, uh, he's getting cranked up for hoops eventually, but not, not too soon. We want to keep playing football for a while. And we said this is that unique situation where the, this year Section 3 said, yeah, the semifinals out. It could still be part of COVID protocols just to keep the mm-hmm. congregating of more than one or two teams together. Why that is, but like you say, a home game for sectional semis is uh, is something very, very rare. So it's you know sure. a moment for the Trojan team to treasure this week. You know, we've had sectional football in Section 3 since the early 80s. Um, uh, they flirted with it at certain levels, I think, in the late 70s. But the early 80s, it became a real deal, uh, and that was when I got here. And uh, the state tournament came in in 90. We started, we hosted it in Section 3 at the Carrier Dome, but we didn't participate as a section. And then in 93, we started to be involved with the New York State tournament. And, yeah, this is the first time in Class B a semifinal game is not at a neutral site. Um, it, this, with, since the state tournament came around, we had a home game against, uh, you know, um, Oh, actually, it was a league championship game, I pardon me, before a semifinal game back in the 80s against West Hill. But that was, uh, you know, top four only played, and, and it was a little different arrangement. So, so yeah, and I, if I'm not mistaken, I think three of our last eight years, we've had four home games. The other five, we've had uh, three home games only. And, and crazy thing is there was, like, some choice situations where the section said, well, Homer, you know, there's a pretty good chance you're going to be in the playoffs every year and have a great shot at earning – you know, home win. So I appreciate the respect, but we'd like to have four regular season home games. This gives us a fifth home game for the first time, and I can't remember when, uh, which is kind of nice. And as we said, the last time around, it was 30 21 home run winning it. You know, it's a pair of uh, second half touchdowns. So of course, uh, the guy who's been doing it uh, lately, Sam Sorensen, had a nine yard touchdown run, and of course, Logan Peck had a one yard run that uh, sealed the win uh, with a minute, minute to go in the uh, ball game. But that game, that was that was a Logan Peck game. Thirty-six carries, uh, 153 yards. He ran for 248 of the yards that Homer had all night. And again, like he's not going to be available. Damani Durham's not going to be available. But we see what you've seen. David Morris has stepped up now. Sam Sorensen has stepped up, and there's a slew of guys behind me that can all carry the ball. So yes. I mean, it'll be more tailback. Part, part, I, I don't want to say tailback by committee because I think. Uh, if it comes to power football, there's no no choice. You want power. You know that combination of thunder and lightning is yeah, the yeah. mighty money thing. What the Dolphins used to call it. You yeah, got, you got the, the Larry Zonka, Sam yeah. Soren, 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 and guy, and you got the Mercury Morris, Jim Kick guy, and, uh, and David I, Morris. And I love that you say that because I mean that was my prime. That's when my my interest and love for football just blossomed back in the early '70s, '72, if I remember right. But I was a big. I've been a lifelong SU fan. Larry Zonka wore 39 in the NFL, and uh, I told Sam. Uh, when he came up, I know he was looking to wear a number that his grandfather wore when he was a player, but it was taken by a, a kid ahead of him in school. So it, it, that's the rule. If I'm the upperclassman, I keep the number till I graduate. Well, Sam, I said, that's a brand new jersey. It's not been worn, Sam, that number 39. And there's a pretty special running back who could play tailback, although he was truly a fullback. He reminds me of you, and that's Larry Zaka. And, you know, we even use what's called Larry Zaka technique on dive handoffs and stuff. Um, you know, how he used to cradle the ball with both hands and, and those quick handoffs where you don't want to be playing around with your arms. We use Larry Zonka technique, and then we talk about Andy Parker technique in the open field. But, but yeah, I like our skill position depth has helped us. Will Dady moving. I mean, think about it. In the spring, Will played center. He moves back where he belongs all year, tight end. And now that Hoff, Bryce Hoffman's healthy, we can put Will at fullback for us, and we have a, a real – we have a physical backfield presence. We put kids like Lynch back there. We got speed with Hunter Realman. We've got some quickness and, and toughness with a kid if we had to. And Braden Marsh, I mean, we're in a position where our skill p- position depth gives us the flexibility to say, yeah, I mean, if you watch us last week, you're gonna, man, they're going to give Sorensen the ball 25, 30 times, you know, and it may come to that. But deep down, that's not the plan. The plan is uh, tailback by committee, 
it's a great change up if we go from explosive speed and quickness uh, a guy that's really improved his game and david morse how he just he's learned to what i call follow the friendly jerseys into traffic and then all of a sudden when it opens boom he uses his, his tailback skills that really have not a whole lot to do with us as coaches and and he can make big plays and sam is a punishing runner with some good speed phenomenal size and toughness um, so that flexibility is really helping this team getting a hoffman back uh, there's no doubt both teams are much better now as a team than they were in week two. It was their opener because they had to accept a forfeit in week one. It wasn't our opener. I think that gave us an advantage week two. Um, I've told everyone I've talked to, I've watched this film multiple times. I've got five of their uh, games on film, and we've all watched them as a staff. We've been throwing ideas. we got a group chat that we use now, modern era, you know. Uh, before our staff meeting, I mean, we were throwing ideas back and forth. We go to our staff meeting put it put together a game plan and then all day yesterday we were all over one another just what about this what about that because i mean we have uh you know a lot to prepare for there's 58 different plays they've run in the last three weeks between this wildcat and their traditional offense i formation and shotgun offense so uh and think about it 58 plays it's hard to run 58 scout team plays in three days so um you know we've been as a coaching staff really going the extra mile to make sure we can get our guys ready and uh, i'm excited about the effort the attitude you know, our players are really, they, yesterday the sunshine was a gift. It really perked everybody up. Monday was a good day of practice. Yesterday was an excellent day of practice. So we want to keep going in that direction, getting to Friday. And you just didn't get a lot of yards that game. But like you said, it was really their first game. Of course, penalties hurt them a little bit. But they had just 19 rushing attempts for 178 yards. And i go trying to look back at the passing real quick. Of course, every time we sit down and do this, the wind starts blowing, which yeah, is yeah, always kind of funny. conditions outdoors here. <laughs> Again. And a beautiful uh, fall day. And they're two for only two for 14 passing for 55 yards. But like you said, also their main quarterback is not there. So that, it changes up. So it looks like maybe they will be more of a ground game. But that game, you, you, Homer played well against them. And again, of course, again, Logan Peck was key on that side with a, yes. a linebacker. But uh, it's been, again, almost, I don't want to say defense by committee this year, but it's, it's forced you to make a couple changes. But that, as you said, you start out with the the season with the blue team was maybe 15, 16, and that's up to yeah. 17, 18, 19, right. 20. Actually, because of uh, just injuries, and it's made up more, you know, mix and match when needed. I'm sure we're not unique. We do, we do what we call the best 11, and we know that the number 11 is the target number minimum. Um, our opening game, we, we were looking at our team, and we said there was a clear division line, like between the ninth player and then everybody else on the roster. So it's like we had nine defensive players. We do the same thing on offense and special teams. And we said, let's put the, forget about what position they play. Let's put the best kids on the board. And that list, after three weeks, got to about 13. Um, and that list now is literally, I mean, we're looking at 14, 15, and it would have been even bigger. Um, we don't have Logan Peck. Obviously, we don't have Wyatt Wilbur. But, you know, we're saying that we've got interchangeable parts that are tough. And, and, and can. so our blue defense, like you said, if push come to shove, it actually probably has 16 guys on it right now out of the 30 that we can play. We have 33 on the roster, but 30 that can play. So so more than half the team is on the starting defense. And uh, if you look at that first game against VVS in week two, we ran uh, – we were approaching 70 plays in the game offensively. They only – they were less than 40. So we doubled up the play count on them. And when you have the ball and you're a ball control team like we are and have been in most years – um, you know, we just we just use that to our advantage. If they don't have the ball, it's a little harder for them to score. You know, also their running back Fred, uh, you know, James Wheeler. Pardon me, James Wheeler the fourth. Um, he he uh, was out most of the second. I think all the second half, uh, other than maybe a kick or something, because he had had some severe cramping that was just he couldn't get rid of it and it was driving him crazy. So uh, he'll be there the whole four quarters this week, and uh, he's in shape now and doing really well and. So, as I said, I think this is going to be, you know, last week was a thriller. I think you're going to see another one very similar. Physical, tough, could be back and forth. Both teams could be leading at points in the game, and, and it's going to come down to mistakes, penalties, turnovers. You know, those will be the critical things that, that can turn the tide. You know, you give up a big play on special teams or you, you create a big play on special teams. That's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty influential on the outcome of a game. So we always say that that third of the game controls more than 50% of all outcomes, the old special teams. So it's going to be the – you're going to see that in this football game this week. Yeah, and in that game, they said they only ran for 178 yards, but Wheeler did have 139 of them roughly and just 10 carries, and that was just all first-half action. Think about it, yeah. 14 and, yards a carry. 
Uh, yeah. He had in the game in the first, and it was all first half. He had two really big runs, one on a nice cutback where we got caught out of position, and they did a nice job of blocking too, but uh, where the play was not designed to cut back to the middle, but he did, and he picked up massive yardage on that. I forget the exact amount. And the opening play of the game, which we had rehearsed, we said, look, if they go in this bunch formation to our defensive right, and they have number one, and he's not at the tailback. They're going to bring him in motion. We run the jet sweep. <laughs> they brought him in motion, ran the jet sweep. We lost contain. They did a great job of blocking, and, and it was a huge play for them. Again, you know, those two plays that I that vividly stick in my mind were probably more than a third of his yardage. So, you know, it's it's really uh, we we've got to we've got to stop the big play. I also want to bring up. I mean. At tailback, everybody talks about Wheeler, and he's an excellent player. But the leadership of the new Q, QB, that Jackson uh, Herodnick there, he, he's been great. Their tight end is a tough son of a gun, Matt, Matt Rossi, Matthew Rossi, 44. Uh, I also I said to the guys, if I could pick anyone on their team off to come and play for our football team, it would not be uh, Wheeler, even though he's awesome. The kid I would pick is the Palmer kid, number 22. He's their Mr. Reliable. He's their tough guy in a, in a positive way. You know, when they need someone to – be in a feature position for returning the ball or catching a punch in a dangerous situation, it's number 22, Bryce Palmer. Um, he's also that kid who, he's the Z back of the slot who does a great job on the jet sweep. He does a great job lead block, and he runs good routes. He has great hands, and he's an effort kid. He's on the field every down of the game. So, you know, they got more than one weapon, and they got great senior leadership. So, uh, and, and, and probably the most important part of their offense is although they've had injuries, and like everybody has, and some changes, the five guys starting on the line of scrimmage are the same five guys that played in week two, which was their week one game. So they have not replaced an offensive lineman the entire season. All five have always started, and they're just playing with, you can tell, they, they, they communicate well. They've got their assignments down. You know, they're a rock-solid group that's probably the ultimate foundation of that offense. Right. Yeah, and the only two guys we, you know, we haven't even mentioned that did were kind of involved in the offense, other than Whitman, who got hurt. You know, like we yes, said, didn't. Quarterback. You know, I'm leaving him kind of out just because he's not available. Logan Vanderhoff had only like one or two carries, and mm -hmm. the other guy had a, had five of the carries that game. Was uh, number 25, uh, yep. Br Brady Carver, were the other two guys that you know ran the ball against you that game. So, like you said, other than Wheeler, can be see a whole bunch of different guys now involved in that offense more. So, sure, it'll make it a little bit trickier on defense to, to kind of read what they've got to do. Well, and how they're they not handle one things. dimensional. They're not one dimensional in their run game. That's for sure. Uh, Vanderhoof number four is their fullback. Their true fullback. He's an excellent outside linebacker for them. He plays, again, most of the game. Uh, he's very rarely off the field. Uh, you mentioned number 25, Brady Carver. In the Wildcats set, Brady comes in as the tailback. Now think about our game week two. Brady was the tailback that replaced Wheeler when he was out with the cramps. So he is a quality tailback. On a lot of teams, he'd be their starter. It just so happens he's got a really good young man in front of him. I think of Alex Evangelista for us. In many years, Alex would have started for us, but we had a kid named, uh, I think it was Mac, was it Mac Kataya or was it Jake Plunkett? One of those two was there, so he had to wait, and he get, he didn't get the carries that normally a kid of his talent level would have. This Carver kid is just, uh, he's a senior, he's, you can tell he's a leader, he's tough, and uh, he is the tailback in the Wildcat set, so they have a two tailback, you know, the true tailback, Wheeler, is the is the quarterback slot in the Wildcat offense out of the shotgun look. And right next to him is an outstanding tailback in Carver. So this team definitely uh, is is like us, multi-talented in their skill areas. You know, I love the tough. I like, too, one of the things they do that's pretty unique. And, yeah, you might say it makes defense a little easier to think about. But, you know, there are a lot of plays. They'll only send two receivers out. And they're giving their quarterback A, a B, throw it away. A, B, throw it away, or A, B, scramble. That's it. They don't do a backside route. They do max protection so the quarterback has time. So even though you're only sending a couple of receivers out, you know, you can only cover so long, whether you're man or zone, it's easier if the kid's getting four, five, six seconds to, to survey and wait till somebody breaks open. So VVS is probably the best team I've seen in Section 3 Class B. It's saying we're okay to committing, you know, the extra two guys to blocking, keeping that fullback and tight end in, and just sending out our Z and X or, or a back and the Z and the X at most. So, uh, you know, it's a different approach that's very obviously look at the success of the program. It, it works, and, and they, they teach it so that be patient. It's going to take a little longer to get open, but we're giving you the added protection so you have that time, and uh, it doesn't matter who's a quarterback getting thrown to wide open receivers. So now this year, this last week is the first time we saw like a true option team with, the, yes. you know, the fullback, you know, could get the ball to fullback or the tailback or the quarterback could run. 
Do you think that'll be a, an advantage that you saw that now? Because in a way, that kind of sounds almost what like VVS could do now with the, the way they're set up. Well, they're they're uh, when they do run option at VVS all the way. I mean, Coach Oliver's he was a player on the team in the mid '80s when we played against him in the dome, and I had the, I was a young assistant. Um, so he's been a part of EVS football since he could probably walk, you know, uh, options always in his heart. And so they are more of a speed option team, shotgun, one back. They're not traditional dive option like we saw last week at CVA. That doesn't mean, hey, quarterback change has finally been working for a couple weeks. I could see them adding that component to their game, saying Homer hasn't seen us do a true dive option or, you know, they do run the the speed option, which means just simply the snap the ball to the quarterback and the spacing's created by the tailback and quarterback, and they run one way or the other to, to make the decision off the guy they're leaving unblocked. You know, if he's attacking the QB, they pitch it. If he's attacking the tailback, the quarterback keeps it. Another option they do out of the wildcat, they truly have read option where, think about it, you got two tailbacks there. If, if they see if they see that the defensive end that the quarterback, which is number one wheeler, is facing, if he's closing down hard as you put the ball in the belly to the tailback, towards that tailback, he pulls it and runs right where the kid vacates on the edge. If he sees the kid slow playing or standing upright more, then he's going to give the ball to the tailback going back to power side. So, so they do that well. So, yeah, we're going to see not the dive option that we saw a week ago out of both the eye and the split back set, but we're going to see a speed option and then what most people in today's shotgun offenses are calling the read option, and I believe they're reading it. You know, they're, I, see, uh, I see teams' defensive end jump down on the tailback, and boom, Wheeler keeps it and runs. If, if they are standing up, like I said, you can see the kids' numbers. That's a good key. A lot of people say helmet high, numbers up. You know he's waiting for you. Give the ball to the tailback and let him take it. So, so we've, we're preparing for that as well. Okay. Um, uh, defensively, what are you going to do? I know they – that you've played so many times, like you say, and they've had, and honestly, they've had more success win wise overall. I mean, yeah, they're, um, I mean, but, we've, uh, we've we're three and yeah. seven, Tom, and, yeah. and two of those three wins are our last two times we played them. Yeah, so what, what are you expecting? Any change ups on defense this week from uh, the Red Devils, or do you think they're going to pretty much stick to what's worked for them all year? You know, they've played multiple defenses through the years, like everybody, a little bit, but deep down at his core. Uh, Coach Oliver, you can trace it all the way back to the 80s. He is a, he, you know, I know he, I think he has his hand in the offensive side more, but he's a 4-4 coach. And you look at every game film this year, they're a 4-4 team. They did, when everybody was jumping on the shotgun, spread offense bandwagon for a while there, a few years back, he played a lot of 3-5 and slash 5-3 in the short yardage situation like we play as our base. Um, and we saw, we've seen it in their prevent look this year. They've been a 3-5 where they'll play all zone, five underneath zones and flood it, hoping they can pick the ball, reading your quarterback's eyes, and three deep guys. Great way to cover the field, and they just trust their three linemen are going to pressure the QB enough to make them hurry his throw. But they also play it five. They can play it man-to-man as well. Um, they can even walk it up and play five guys pressuring the QB, have five-man coverage underneath with one free. So so we, we've prepared for both of those, especially in our spread offense, our red two-minute O. Um, you know, but I, they're gonna, I will be shocked. If they don't show up and say, we're playing our 4-4, and if you only have one receiver wide of them, our outside backer is going to ignore that and let the corner handle it, and we're going to come key your tailback. They're, they're, they're manning up a lot of times. Their free safety and their corners will man up on our, our X, Y, and Z, the tight end, the flanker, and the wide out. And, and the other four linebackers, our initial read is the tailback. I mean, Homer's a tailback-oriented team. We're, we haven't changed. We're not going to change, um, you know, and especially with the skill depth we've had. So I see them showing up in their 4-4 real tight. Uh, I, I see the backers screaming downhill the minute they see our quarterback reverse his numbers to work to that, that handoff, that power game handoff. So uh, I would be stunned if they showed up to play anything other than their 4-4 might look a lot like a 6-2 against us, and that's just common. A lot of people who play 4-4 do that. But I don't see a dramatic change in there. You know, they've beat really good teams playing what they believe in and, and you know you hang your hat on something you, you better believe in it and you better your kids better understand you trust them and, and they're doing that that's the stage of the season they're at and of course VV, so VV has to come into this game like you said just a third win against uh, you know third win over the Blue Devils but the, or Red Devils excuse me but it's the first one on their home turf and their nice newer stadium and stuff yes. so, so yeah, you, you know emotionally they're going to come in and they're going to want to say well okay we, you beat us up there but will beat you at home when it's more important too you know a lot of that stuff gets written and talked about you know i mean i can name in 85 
Two minutes to go in the game, we beat them on a, on a we, we threw a sideline out, or a sideline hitch. Then we did a hitch and go. We scored the touchdown. We win. I believe Gary Oliver was on that team that we beat in the last two minutes to win the sectional crown that year in 85. We beat him in 17 in the playoffs over Chittenango, and we showed up and played. I mean, a team that had really uh, been able to bully us a little bit the last couple times we played them, and we just went after them, and, and we played a, a smart football game where we totally ended up start to finish dominating it to the point that our, our second-string kids played in the second half of that game, and they actually played the VVS defense because – they had had more reps at that during the week, so Coach Witten said, let's do this. Let's put our kids out and tell them to run the VVS base D, the, the second string kids, because they had more time in it and practice all week. And, and, uh, and then this year we beat them in week two where, again, what were the advantages we had? It was our second game. It was their first. They had a big 50-year celebration of their 1971 team. Um, you know, we, we, we were not distracted by anything other than Homer football. So there were, and, you know, we had Logan Peck, obviously, who's probably our most gifted raw talent on our team and he he was a dominator that day the kick return for touchdown uh led the team in tackles led the team in rushing i mean you know he just had like i said if that young man stays healthy he is the maybe the all cny mr football which means double a to d to you know to eight man football he might have been the sections player of the year um you know just misfortune of, of banging up that knee and uh you know so so this this again this has this yeah they've they've had more wins against us than we've had against them uh but let's keep the trend the latest trend going <laughs> um so what are the keys to homer getting a win on friday night uh you know the truth be known i mentioned it earlier in the interview here you know this is one of those special teams on both of these teams if you look at our games mm -hmm. where we've had some battles uh, our soundness of special teams has been big for both of us. I mean, even with our mistake we had last week, for example, on the kick return, where we let one die on the ground, never should happen on kick return. Uh, the team rose to the occasion, the defense rose to the occasion, and we, 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 we stuffed the uh, CVA team. You know, so that's what you're going to have to do. You're, the team that, you know, in addition to the stereotypical cut down penalties, no stupid penalties, no mental penalties. Don't turn the ball over. Play smart in the special teams. You know, uh, the team that can do that, that can make, can react to adversity, I think will be maybe the ultimate, like it was last week for us, the team that reacts to a bad thing happening to them best wins this game this week. I think that will be the, that, that'll be the mindset when somebody analyzes the game when it's over. You know, you know whether it's a VVS winning or home or eight, this happened to them, it put themselves in a hole and they rose to the occasion. You know, it's like that goal length stop just before half where you've, you've turned the ball over inside your 10 and the team's on the one-yard line with the last play of the half and you stop them. Pretty important, you know. So the team that f deals with adversity best will win the game this week. And obviously you, we've addressed it, the three home games on a calendar this year. Got the home section, first section game, what you expected. Now the bonus home game. Mm -hmm. How are you... You know, you know, emotionally that'll play on the seniors a little bit. They're, but they're, they're, they think that we've been fortunate to get five, like you say, five home games this year. That's I mean, that's got to, you know, be a little extra motivation for the seniors to have a, a cap off their home season in a good face. You well, know. you know, again, real life gets in the way, we say, in a good way. Uh, you look at these this, this senior class. They're 10-0. They were 3-0 in the spring. They'd have been 5-0 in the spring if the other two teams would have been willing to play us. They were, we were 3-0 in the spring. We're 7-0 right now. We did lose. We did. did I, we lost a game due to uh, unfortunately numbers and COVID. Um, you know, and, and rather than sulk and pout about it, and we just kept moving forward. And had, that's where the maturity of this team has come a long ways to realize. You know, things don't always go conveniently. And and, and uh, so yeah, this senior class. The the good thing about where we're at and having that privilege to earn that home playoff game, we knew that they were going to have at least one more home game in last week. And this week we can tell them, gentlemen, you'll, this group will never step on this field again to play a football game, ever. So you have a privilege. Most students don't know this. You have the privilege of knowing this will be the last time you suit up to play on your home butts field. And uh, to me, that's a gift. It, it just reminds you that, you know, no matter how fast or slow I am or big or strong I am cherish the moment cherish the opportunity and give my best effort to my teammates if I walk out of the locker room down to the game field for four quarters give my best effort I don't care if we get if we lose as a coach I don't 
I will not be upset with our if we give our best effort and somehow VVS beats us. They earned it. But and, and so you can tell the kids that, and it's it's black and white. It's right in front of them. And as a head coach, I like that. I like to be able to say, gentlemen, understand this is the last time you will play a meaningful football game on Butts Field. Um, and I want you to understand that don't use that to create negative nervousness. Use it like the spring theme was out of my mouth, positive nervousness. Be nervous nervous in a positive way. Be respectful of your teammates to the point that, you know, I, I, even if I make a mistake, so what? Make it full speed. And if I make a mistake, make up for it the next time I get a chance on the field. And so you get the privilege of all that heading into this game. And again, well, we, we kind of – we. I haven't talked as much this time around because I really wanted to focus on the opponent more because we sure. we know about them. But uh, there are some again some guys, some are seniors, some are underclassmen that have you know come come along. And as much as we talk about how that running game is going to be important again, as it will without Logan and without Damani being an option in the backfield. But uh, one guy we didn't really talk much about in the backfield is the quarterback Jake Calibro, uh, still closing you know, sixty percent completion rate for a passer this year. It's he's ready if needed. You know you got him. You, then you got the like you said. You got Will Dady that could kind of slide out there. You might as, as a fullback or Sammy as a tailback yep. or a fullback. Um, Hunter Realman's come on well, and oh, yeah. uh, yep. Tommy Mahonic has uh, always shown he can once in a while make a, a spectacular catch if needed yeah. here and yep. there. So I mean, so so the passing game and you know the development of how Jake has developed this second year as a quarterback could be a big key also i went home and, and i and i said to myself yesterday and i was talking to a couple of friends i said before i left the stadium i said that young man it's just typical how much have we talked about jake Calibro? not too much and i wouldn't trade him for any other quarterback i've seen this year um he's he's a class kid he's a hard-working kid he's disciplined also by the way he's a high honor student and you know uh, just everything about him exudes uh, humbleness with, with class and capability, you know, and and I will take our passing game and I'll put it up against anybody's because he has the maturity and discipline to know not to force things. And as a coach, you know, yeah, they say, oh, you got to take some risks sometimes. You do. But the truth be known, he's he's been so coachable. He's improved his skill set in these last three or four years of high school to a level that, you know, coaches wish they could have. Um, he's improved all the, you know, he's fine tuning his game to this day. We worked on something this week in practice. We went back to the boom pass and you know what? I got a 15 to 20 minute session with our quarterbacks where we talked about, you know, how do you control your ability to have vision? So when you're making your first read to determine, are we going deep right away on a play action pass? Or are we going to come down to the short route? Or are we going to check backside? Or, you know, occasionally we have a safety valve off of that. And we just said, never take this for granted and never disrespect the thought of throwing the ball away and live to see another down. And, uh, you know, Jake, Jake is quietly been uh, the, the rock. He's been the, he's been the rock. We've had great offensive and defensive line play that's gotten better, but it's had to change a lot. It's, we've had to move pieces around, you know. And, but the one constant has been that, that classy, calm demeanor, but tough, intense attitude of Jake Calibro. And, uh, you know, we're going to hate to see that young guy graduate. You know, we've got some great people coming up. But the truth is, is that, you know, it's, it's been such a pleasure and he doesn't even need or want any credit. And because of that, he doesn't get talked about enough. And, and just any team would be, be thrilled and be fortunate to have that level of player with that kind of an attitude. Yeah. And on the defensive side, like we said, we talked, you know, how important Logan was. Not what he's on offense, especially, but what he can do on defense. And, of course, the emergence of Taven Malchek this year. Of course, Sammy Sorensen yes. playing linebacker as he emerged. There's some other guys on that side of the ball that have kind of really grown. One of them was a blue-collar player this past week. Owen Murphy has uh, really developed, you know, as a linebacker. Another one, Logan Darling on the defensive line. He played some line, some linebacker. Yes. And, uh, yes. So, I mean, you said there's, so there's been a number of guys that, on that defensive side that really have had to step up and develop this year and have proven it. You know, it's not like we've reinvented the way we play defense, but it's it's awesome how I mentioned it in the paper again last week. When you return to when like we were struggling in the game, we were struggling because of an emotional reaction to a couple plays. I mean, we had a smart football team, well coached last week playing us, and they said we're not going to be cute. We're going to pound it. We're going to keep the ball out of Homer's hands because again, in seven games we've punted five times. Find another team in Section 3 that can say that. In seven games, we've punted five times. We're moving the football. We're controlling the ball. That's the, one of the keys to our winning football games. And, uh, 
You know, so those kids like the Logan Darlings, Owen Murphy, not getting a ton of downs, but he's reliable and he knows he's making a difference. I spoke with uh, Braden Marsh, who is, he and Jeffrey Stauber are next men up in coverage schemes that we have. You know, whether it's secondary or playing an outside, they, even though they're D-backs, they may have to cover someone in a linebacker role. And, uh, and although they don't have a million downs on the field, or, or dozens of downs, they've worked to get better so that if we, if we choose to put them in, or if they make their way onto the field, we know we can trust their best effort's going to be there. They're going to know their job. And you know what? If someone's good enough to beat them, it's because they're a pretty darn good football player. And, of course, I, 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 I will throw this out there because I just got after when you mentioned Jeffrey. 5'6", 126 on our roster. Pound for pound, he, you talk about more in wrestling, you know, pound for pound, what a guy can do. But yeah. 5'6", 126 pounds. Jeffrey Stauber, yes, he's a great, quick, elusive running back out of the tailback spot, but probably one of the tougher kids on the defensive side when he's out there and has to make some plays. Yeah, I mean, he, he gets he, – traditionally, he's not been in a lot on the blue – um, but he's our kid. If you look at our depth chart, you know, he's, he's learned multiple positions because of his attitude, effort, and his trustworthiness. And, and we tell our guys, you know, there's something about being a teammate. And when you're, when, you're, when you're 35 and you're 45 and you're 55, you look back and you won't forget. You won't forget a kid like Jeff Stauber. You'll go, you know what? He, he had some quickness. He had some skills. But he didn't have the gift of size. And uh, you've heard me say this before. When guys will ask you, why are the littlest guys the hardest working? They have to be. If they don't have the big, massive side to back up, maybe a little bit of a mediocre effort, they have to be an effort kid. And, uh, you know, again, this is when you'll see winning teams, teams in the semifinals of sectional play. They're teams that have kids like Jeff Stauber, uh, you know, Owen Murphy, Braden Marsh. Taven Melchick's improved his awareness of how to play his position this year better than any season he's played with us on the defensive side of the ball. And we need that if we're going to continue to win. So, so you're right. I mean, it's pretty special when you have that. I look at our scout team. Our scout team is we've had better talent on our scout team in many teams. But I don't know if we've had any better effort. And the, the willingness to do everything to simulate the other team's defense when we're in practice – uh, I'm just so proud to be the guy that gets to have a hand and help coach these kids because of what Coach Whitten does with that scout defense is impressive to really improve our offense. And then likewise, Coach Pasidlik, especially young Coach P and Coach Cotts running the scout O with a lot of those guys that are the fringe blue players. But when they're not in there in practice, they're on the other squad making us work to get better. So, um, you know, that's, that's what being a team's all about. And just for that, I'm going to throw three more names out there. Just, you know, two of them are on the offensive side. Speaking of guys, you know, working with young Coach P, uh, Owen, uh, you know, Young, d- developing kind of as a center this year. Noah Young. Noah, Noah Young. Yep. And uh, the other is, uh, we, can't, you can't, we saw hints and glimpses of him last year, but uh, he's developed more on the offensive side is uh, Blair Wakula on the mm-hmm. offensive side. And then, again, just he happened to be the blue-collar player this week, Hunter Reelman. Start of the season, it maybe he's going to be, you know, some full, you know, some linebacker, some different thing. But he's, he's become key on the offense, on the, you know, on the counter places like yes, a Z yes. back. He's become a much more efficient line linebacker this year on the defensive side. Well, actually, he's playing D line this year yeah. for us, and yeah. we would like maybe down the road to see him, Tyler. Or, yeah, Tyler Realman is a, is a linebacker, but yeah. right now, he he's playing D line, yeah. and he's a buck fifty five. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but but I was leaning towards Hunter just because I'm just looking oh, at the Hunter. thing. Hunter, Hunter, the Hunter, Hunter. Yeah, okay, the Hunter is developing. It you know has developed. You know he's more linebacker play there. He's yes. been needed on necessity. Uh, again on the offense, you know what he does as far as you know the running. You know the the counter plays a lot of mm-hmm. that stuff. He's in that, and just him needed a kicker, a kickoff guy this year. And lo and behold, Tyler Ruben learned how to be a kicker. So I mean, so he's uh, another guy. It's. You know, those three guys have really stepped up this year. And as Tyler, and I'll yes. back from yep. his back yep. problem, I too. mean, you look at our offensive line and defensive line, I think the consistency of trusting how they're taught has allowed them to get better. You know, Tyler Reelman's had a couple of minor back issues that uh, kept him out of a couple games, and that was uh, not something due to football. It was due to uh, a long muscle imbalance thing that was created he, you know that poor kid had a, a ATV accident when he was younger he had to have his lower leg rebuilt and uh, he had to sleep on a couch for weeks to keep his leg in the proper position so he wouldn't and and his quickness and toughness is impressive I mean, like I said he's 155 he's consistently on both sides of the ball working against 250 270 280 and uh, no wonder his back hurts once in a while you know but 
um, you know, so Tyler's really come through for us. Hunter, Hunter has that, that I, I'm going to call it a competitive, he's got that competitive knack or instinct. Um, he's, he knows Hunter's not going to come down, take the fullback on like the old end run drill. He's not going to take the fullback on and smash him to the inside and tackle the tailback. What he's going to do is dip underneath. Or he's going to jab step and beat, and his quickness is going to beat the kid who's trying to light him up. And he's going to make a play at the line of scrimmage or for a couple-yard game that a lot of guys wouldn't have the football savvy to do. Um, he's been a huge impact on our offensive side with the counter play. He, he's an, got excellent hands. I mean, you know, Hunter Realman should be a defensive back. But when we didn't have Wyatt Wilbur, we didn't have Bryce Hoffman, we didn't have those kids that were the expected probable outside linebacker starters, we said, who is a kid that has not only toughness, but a high football IQ and a willingness to use? He's got instinct that he can grab onto. That it's not. I don't think a lot of it's. Ta- it's not taught. He he just has a knack to make a play, and it may not even look that glamorous. Or he just he'll make a play and, and latch on, and, and you know, okay. So it's second and seven, where another kid in there would whiff on it, and now it's second and two. So, uh, you know, huge contributor. And like you said, if I asked Hunter Realman, said, you like being a kicker, he would tell me, Coach, I hate it. But you know what? He's trustworthy. He's going to try to do it right every time. And, uh, again, you love that as a coach when you have a player. That's why he's getting put there because we believe he can be trusted because he has that, that, that football IQ that is tough. And I, I lied. There are two more guys I want to mention because they weren't available for the VVS game. So, as you said, we've lost uh, Damani Durham, who was starting to find his way in, you know, that second week of the season, kind of where he started finding his way. And, of course, Logan Peck, the two guys that are back and have made impacts and they've been back, uh, and you've mentioned them, one of them already, uh, you know, how, uh, how, how, you know, yeah, my mind just went, Bryce, Hoff, Bryce Hoff, Hoffman yeah. and Cam Fiddler. Yeah, Cameron Fiddler and Hoff <laughs> have been the guys that we were hoping we could get out of them what we did, knowing that, you know, a camp uh, – they, they have gotten better through the season, and, and you know it because you see confidence in them. And, again, two humble kids, you know, polite kids, you know, tough kids, so tough players who their confidence has grown because they, they understand their job mentally, so they're not questioning. Uh, I'll use Hoff, for example. You know, we, we were bouncing him back and forth as a stand-up linebacker and a defensive end contain end, which is really an outside linebacker, that you walk up and try to contain power plays like we're going to face this week. This week we decided we're going to simplify his job, and he's going to play the edge. He's going to play the edge. He's a solid. He can take on the fullback. He can take on the pulling guard on the uh, counter trade play. Um, he can take on the pulling guard on the go boom play and still stuff. Even if it doesn't make the tackle, he'll make the play because it'll force that tailback to run back inside, you know, to his buddies who are going to be there to mop things up. So they have been, again, a gift, a gift because they are willing to give their best effort in practice, and it carries over into the game if they make a mistake they make it giving their best effort and as a coach you never get mad at that you're like okay i say it all the time we're all going to make a mistake the only guys that don't are the ones that aren't on the field but here's what we're going to do we make a mistake we make it full speed we learn from it and we don't make it again and and they have lived by that credo um you know so they have been massive cam fiddler could be in a flash he could play the whole game at center you mentioned noah young I had a, a friend of Homer football, uh, actually a friend of mine, his wife, really has known Noah his whole life, and said, how is he doing? And I told Noah this story yesterday. I said, no, I need to talk to you before practice. I think he thought he was in trouble. And I just said, I, I am as happy as I've been witnessing Noah's effort as a football player this year over any other year in high school. Um, he's come a long ways. He's earned that starting job. He's made sure he didn't, he didn't have to relinquish it. But on the other hand, you know, should Noah not be able to go? Cameron Fiddler's there to step in with confidence. Owen Murphy's there to step in with confidence. So that's the kind of depth as a, as a coach in a football program. You need to build that. You know, you need to have three deep. I always say three deep in every position, ideally, must be three deep in every critical position, no matter what. Well, that will wrap up this edition of Trojan Football Talk. And uh, Coach Basilica, I'll thank you. This might be our last outdoor thing. You can feel the nip of maybe snow in the air. And it's, yes. it's November, but we're still outside uh, recording. We may be having to uh, find shelter real soon. But uh, 
hopefully we're doing it with a few more weeks of football still to go because we can go into December if we have to this year. So well, It's 40 degrees and windy today, and you know what? Yesterday's practice started with rain, sleet, snow, but by the time the boys got dressed for practice, it stopped, the sun came out, and it was a perfect day to practice football. Comfortable. You know, you got to remind them, hey, even though it's cool, guys, go get a drink. Hydration is one of those keys to staying healthy. Um, we're looking at, uh, think back to the start of the spring season. We were going to do a mini review clinic the day before season started. We had a blizzard. We had a blizzard. We had to cancel it. I was already at school setting up, and then the blizzard hit. And for safety of our kids, we couldn't put them on the road because the snow was coming in buckets. Um, we practiced in snow. We practiced on top of snow. It's just reverse. Instead of starting that way and finishing in better weather, we're, we started in the better weather, and we're going to finish in a little bit of snow. Which is more normal. That's, that's right, and there's <laughs> nothing wrong with that full cycle. I'm happy that we're worrying about those sort of things. So once again, the Section 3 Class B semifinals, Friday night at Butts Field, 7 o'clock kickoff, Homer against VVS, round 2 for uh, 2021. So it'll be interesting. Like I said, it'll be a, a good game. And, Hopefully we have another nice crowd, another wild student section like the, uh, yes. the last week was. So yes. we'll see how it goes. But again, Coach Vasilek, thanks for taking time to lock, talk to us, and uh, best of luck. Thank you, Tom. We're looking forward to Friday night. And that will do it for this edition of Trojan Football Talk. Today's show brought to you by American Credit Union for every day for everything. Located next to Little Caesars at 3944 Route 281 in Cortland. By the Cortland Voice, the exclusive media partner of Trojan Football Talk. For all your local news and sports in Cortland County at no cost to you, check out CortlandVoice.com. By the Royal Auto Group on Route 281 in Cortland, the home of no hassle, no razzle dazzle. Check them out at RoyalAutoGroup.com. By Yemen Real Estate at the entrance to Yemen Park off I-81, exit 11 in Cortland. By DJ Philly C. Make your wedding, party, or event extra special with the best DJ in the area. Contact DJ Philly C. at 607-745-4346. By Nikki C.'s Hometown Pizzeria and Meatball Shop on Route 281 next to Hobo's in Homer. Find them online for fast, secure ordering or call 607-749-5300. They have a unique menu with dietary-specific options. Nikki C.'s your grab-and-go specialists. By Graftex, located at Elm Street in Cortland. Founded in 1984, they provide custom screen printing and embroidery for teams and local businesses. Graftex continues its dedication to servicing customer needs for innovative graphic designs, custom and printed apparel, and quality service. They are easy to contact at 1-800-417-7791. By Seven Valley Agency at 18 Tompkins Street in Cortland for all your personalized insurance services. Give them a call at 607-753-1821 or check them out online at sevenvalleyagency.com. Seven Valley Agency, where your money matters, our advice counts. By Isaac Merker Studio, handling all your photographic needs in Central New York since 1982 at 74 Hamlin Street in Cortland. Give them a call at 607-756-0849 or check them out online at eyesofburger.com or on their Facebook page. By M&D Deli, located on Central Avenue in Cortland, open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. till 3 p.m. M&D has breakfast sandwiches, bakery items, and daily lunch specials. They are also available for catering. Check out their Facebook page for more information. Stop by or call 607-753-TO-GO, that's 753-8646, and look for their new food truck coming in the spring of 2022. By Crop Growers LLP, the first choice in crop insurance located in Homer. Contact KC Slate at 607-591-2460 for more information. By the First National Bank of Dryden at 12 South Main Street, Homer. Safe, secure, and locally owned for all your banking needs. For more information, stop by, call 607-662-4179, or check them out online at drydenbank.com. So once again, a final reminder, Friday night, Section 3, Class B semifinal action at Butts Field. 7 o'clock kickoff, Homer playing host to the VVS Red Doubles. So for my guest, Gary Pazilic, and your truly Tom Vartanian, thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you again soon.